Hey, it's Fiona. Are your horses getting enough minerals? Maybe you're feeding a commercial mineral supplement. Maybe you're feeding a commercial feed that has minerals in it. Or maybe you're hoping that the paddocks your horses are in have enough minerals in them. Or the hay or the chaff or whatever else you're feeding have enough minerals in them. Have a look at this video and see what you think. Whenever I go to see a horse, I inevitably ask the owners what minerals are they feeding for their horses. They might not realise that often your horses aren't getting enough minerals, and here's why. So you get some countries like England and New Zealand that are known for their lovely rich soils. Australia is not so no, much known for rich soils, it generally is a bit poor in, in minerals. But all around the world, even in countries where the soils are quite rich, there is a decline in minerals in the soils due to things such as artificial chemical fertilisers. So what happens is the plants absorb 70 to 80 trace minerals from the soil, which you know your, your horses would then eat. But the commercial fertilisers are then put on the paddocks and they're up to about, say, 10 minerals. What about all the rest? You cut the hay, ship it off and sell it, replace the paddocks with six, seven, eight, nine, ten minerals. There's a whole bunch of minerals that are missing. Same with animals grazing. You graze it with cattle, sheep, horses, whatever. And yes, there's a bit of manure around, but there really isn't anything really replacing those 70 to 80 trace minerals. The goodness is not being put back in the soil. In past decades, the older type farmers would put the compost and all that lovely organic matter back into the soil to help to remineralize the soil. But often that's going to landfill these days. So the actual life of the soil is destroyed. The microbiome, like the gut microbiome of yours or your horse, is being destroyed. The soil contains bacteria, fungi, plant and animal life and they interact with each other in a balance. And every one of these organisms needs heaps of those minerals, not just your 10 minerals to survive and to play a part in this delicate balance. Some of the bacteria have a vital role in converting soil minerals into the forms that plants can absorb. So the fertilizers, MPK fertilizers that most farmers use, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, gradually change the soil pH and make it more acidic. So what happens is these bacteria that convert the minerals can't survive in that acidic soil. So therefore the plants have trouble absorbing the minerals. They're just not available to the plants. So the farmers usually realize that the soil is too acidic and they put lime on it which is calcium magnesium to balance the soil back again, get rid of the acidity. But that converts manganese and some of the other trace minerals into forms that the plants can't absorb. Therefore, your horses aren't getting. Another factor in soil mineral problems is pesticides. Pesticides stop the uptake of minerals. So what happens is, as you know, the fungi are under the ground forming all these lovely little networks and they take the carbohydrates from the plant, but the fungus supplies the plant with the nutrients it draws from the soil, so they work together. This gives the plant a much better mineral extraction system than is possible without the fungus. So without the fungus, the roots have trouble you know, getting hold of the minerals. The chemical fungicides that are being sprayed for other type of fungi, fungi are killing off these good fungi, good bacteria. So again, this reduces the plant's ability to absorb the minerals and bring the minerals up and therefore your animals aren't getting the minerals. Of course, the ideal way is natural farming. It tends to bring about balance in minerals and micronutrients. Unfortunately, organic farming methods are difficult and time consuming. If you're lucky enough to do that, awesome. Meanwhile, you can support your horse's mineral needs in other ways. Another factor can be that maybe your horses can't graze. 
All right, for example, there you go, snow or a paddock that isn't big enough and therefore there's nothing growing even if you tried to. So the problem is that the combination of the soil being depleted of minerals, the fact that the minerals aren't available for the plants to absorb means that most of the food that we and our animals eat are mineral deficient. So you can be giving your horse you know, the very best feed from the stock feeds but often they're mineral deficient and our health and our animal's health is, is reliant on many of the minerals. Science lesson for the day. A mineral is an inorganic substance that's stable at room temperature and has an ordered arrangement of atoms. It's a solid crystal. Now there's almost 5,000 minerals known to exist, but roughly 70 or 80 trace minerals are required to make sure that the body functions the way it should. Certain many minerals are critical, such as potassium, which keeps the muscles going and, and the heart pumping, pumping. Absolutely critical mineral. Macro and micro minerals. So macro minerals are required in a larger amount in the diet. Calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, potassium, sodium, chlorine and sulphur. These minerals are vital, absolutely vital to the development of the skeleton, muscle contraction, acid-base balance, activity of the nervous system and the hoof and the hair and other things. The micro minerals, these minerals are required in small amounts such as copper, iodine, iron, manganese, selenium and zinc. These minerals function in most of the chemical reactions in the body, helping to metabolise nutrients, maintain connective tissue and joint tissue, aid in oxygen transportation to the muscle and perform as antioxidants. So mineral deficiency, sometimes they're a little bit difficult to see until there is actually a problem there. So for example, cracked brittle hooves, maybe zinc deficiency or deficiency in silica or other minerals. One study found deficiency in both zinc and copper increased the incidence of CD type. A foal with a crooked leg could be the result of a brood mare not having enough trace minerals in her diet. Minerals are critically important for literally dozens of daily body functions. Without minerals, horses could not metabolise fats, proteins or carbohydrates. They're important for muscle, nerve function as well as strong bones. Minerals help the blood transport oxygen throughout the body. Minerals such as chromium control the blood sugar level, zinc for body repairs, renewal, development, selenium and zinc together help to boost the immune system. Minerals are necessary for virtually every enzyme the horse needs for everyday metabolism. Minerals are an integral part of some vitamins, hormones and amino acids, so they're pretty important. Yes, you can feed too much, but in some cases there's a broad safety zone. Within that safe range, feeding the minimal amount might be just as effective as feeding the maximum amount, which might save you some money, so long as the horse is absorbing it. That's the trick. Now, some minerals have a relationship together. One mineral might affect the absorption of the other minerals. So, for example, calcium and phosphorus both are essential to the growth and repair of a healthy bone, but they must be present in a certain proportion, with at least as much calcium as phosphorus. Copper, zinc and iron, maybe with manganese and magnesium, play a role in developmental bone abnormalities in young horses, so they need to be fed to the pregnant mares. Calcium may block iron absorption, so if you've got a horse low in iron, you can work out why, maybe it's worms, maybe it's calcium, all sorts of reasons. Absorption. The absorption in the minerals really does vary from horse to horse. They combine in a different in different molecules, some of which are easier to digest than others. For example, zinc can be found in zinc carbonate, zinc sulfate and zinc oxide. And other minerals have different forms as well. 
So if a horse has ulcers or isn't digesting the food very well, perhaps they're not digest digesting as many minerals. Commercial minerals. Your horse might only absorb a small amount of the minerals that are listed on the tag of the feed bag. So you've got your feed, lists all these lovely minerals, but they might not be absorbing them all. The abs average absorption of calcium varies between 50 to 75 percent. Phosphorus, 30 to 55 percent. Iron, maybe only 15 percent. Sodium can be absorbed up to 100 percent, particularly if your horse has been sweating. Now I'm into natural therapies, organic or inorganic minerals. Inorganic minerals are believed to be much less easily absorbed by the horse than their organic form. So if you live in an area where selenium supplementation isn't necessary, for example, it might be a good idea to choose a supplement containing organic selenium rather than selenite. There are natural forms of minerals. So for example, plant minerals. So the plants convert the inorganic minerals into the soil to a more available form. And they often contain 60, 70 or 80 trace minerals. And these are sourced in less commercial forms of them, such as this Life Springs plant minerals there. They're one form. I like plant minerals. There's lots of different brands out there. I like plant minerals because horses are herbivores, they're meant to eat plants. Rock minerals, there's some debate about how much horses can absorb from rock minerals. I have fed them over the years, but I would alternate. I would do plant minerals for, say, a month, rock minerals for a week or so, and then plant minerals again. And again, even with my plant minerals, I may vary the brand. So I might do one brand for a month or to use up the tub and then move to another black brand because they would source them from different places and the minerals would be in slightly different balance. And there's all these really minute trace minerals that are needed in the body. But usually once you start feeding a good plant mineral supplement, you'll notice the horse's coat will shine, the hooves will be better. Often you'll get dapples. They'll just look fabulous if you get a good plant mineral. Sea salt or rock salt. Now they contain 60 to 70 trace minerals, but don't rely on them because they're too high in sodium. So if you're feeding a salt because your horse is sweating and working hard, try a sea salt or a rock salt to have some of the trace minerals. And you could add a little bit of plant mineral in with that as well. Seaweeds, they're high in iodine, but they also have a whole lot of minerals in them. Kelp, nori and dulse. So kelp, for example, Often at stock feeds, the kelp is highly processed and you're going to lose some of those really beautiful little trace minerals. So I tend to feed something like this, which is nori. That's what you roll your sushi in. You might cut a two centimetre strip down the side, flake it up and pop it in your horse's feed a couple of times a week, two or three times a week. Don't overdo it. It's too high in iodine, but it does have all those beautiful minute trace minerals, very important for good health. You may need to feed other commercial supplements with macro minerals in. So this, for example, this plant mineral supplement might not have those macro minerals in, in enough. So you have to fiddle around with it a bit. So a good macro mineral supplement with a little bit of a natural mineral supplement that catches up on all those little minute trace minerals that are really still very good, very important for your horse to stay healthy and fit. I'm Fiona and you might be interested in secret herbal recipes for horses available on amazon.com or the herbal hoof and leg also available on amazon.com. Wishing you and your horses all the very, very best of health and happiness.